Check this out. Whenever an app wants to access your photos or videos, Android 14 now lets you choose which media they get access to instead of letting them see everything. A huge plus for security. Also, you can now have your camera's LED light start flashing anytime you receive a notification, or you can have the entire screen start flashing a certain color. Google calls it flash notifications, and I'm sure this will be really useful for those with hearing problems. Oh, and you know how Google used to name their updates after desserts? Well, Android 14 would have been called Upside Down Cake. It's even in the About Phone section under the Android version and within the Quick Settings. Pretty tasty. And that's just a few features found within Google's newest Android 14 update. And just like last year, they're planning on doing six releases before getting to their stable one, which should be around August. And as of right now, they just released Developer Preview 2 for anyone with a Pixel to install. But you should not install it on your main Pixel device just yet, because there are still plenty of bugs and things that are broken and need improvement. Plus, with any early updates, features will be added, removed, or replaced. Nothing is final here. But if you really want to know how to flash this on your device, stick to the end of this video and I'll show you. It's really not that hard. And by the way, even though Android 14 is barely in its developer preview stage, there are already a ton of new features packed within it and many possible upcoming features discovered within its code. I'll make sure to go over all the major ones, so drop a thumbs up to show your support, because getting this entire list wasn't easy. Anyways, let's jump down the rabbit hole. The first big change that you'll notice is that the back gesture has a new look. It's a lot more apparent with a circular background, and it's also material themed, so it follows the colors of your wallpaper. I really dig it. But an even bigger change with the back gesture is that it will be a lot more predictive, meaning that whenever you slightly swipe to go back, you'll also get a little sneak peek of the previous page. That way, you know exactly what you're jumping back to. Before, you had no idea until you actually went back. It sounds pretty useful, but as of right now, it's pretty broken since it stops working after doing it once. Still, if you want to give it a shot, jump into the developer options and enable predictive back animations. It's all the way toward the bottom. By the way, we just created these new Android 14 inspired wallpapers which look absolutely gorgeous on any home screen. Plus these Android 14 widgets which are all interactable and adaptive. Get them by joining my Patreon today. Surprisingly, the notifications and quick settings panel are still the same. The only thing that got tweaked is the media player. It now shows a tiny little letter E whenever you start playing explicit music. And the output picker has a new section called speakers and display. It just makes it easier to switch to a different connected speaker or your phone speaker. There are also some changes made when you install apps, both good and bad. The good news is that third-party app stores like F-Droid will get more privileges to compete with the Play Store. Most of these improvements have to do with automatic updates. So they'll be able to check whether a user is interacting with an app that's about to get updated and wait till they stop using it to start the silent installation. It just improves the user experience. And these app stores can now also become the exclusive source for future automatic updates to any app. Pretty exciting news for any power user out there. The bad news is that Android 14 will prevent you from installing apps targeting Android 5.1 or lower. So basically any apps that haven't been updated in over a decade will not work on Android. Not a huge deal though, because I think the majority of apps have been updated at least once in the past eight to 10 years if they haven't been abandoned. Plus, this makes it harder for malware to spread, so it's actually a good thing. Also, when you do download an APK and you get the block by play protect dialog, you may notice that it does look a little nicer, but the install anyway button is a little sneakier to find. It's hidden behind a dropdown, so just a heads up. Oh, and if you install an old app that targets Android 8.1 or lower, you'll get a warning saying that it might not work properly before the threshold was Android 5.1 or lower. Also, I still can't believe there are apps on the Play Store that claim to boost your phone's speed when in reality, they're just doing more harm than good. I mean, all they do is kill background processes to free up memory, which forces your OS to do even more work since it now needs to do cold starts of those same processes you just killed which affects the performance and battery life in the long run. Luckily, Android 14 is not going to put an end to these fake speed booster apps. It will only allow them to kill their own background processes, not the entire system's processes like they were able to do before. A taste of their own medicine.
The settings also got a few new features, redesigns, and rearrangements. For example, the security and privacy menu has these drawings for each menu, and I honestly like how they look. Each page also has a new shortcut button that says security and privacy, pretty random and useless in my opinion, and there are no longer any dropdowns within the security and privacy page, making it look a lot more consistent with every other menu in the settings. When setting up your fingerprint, you also get an animation showing you how to position your finger. Pretty helpful. The reset options menu now separates a few options into their own selection, so you can now just reset the mobile network settings on their own, or reset your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth instead, better than resetting all those options at once. For those who like using NFC tags, you can now control which apps to launch whenever you scan one. If you have hearing problems, there's now a dedicated page for all your connected hearing devices. It looks and works just like the regular Bluetooth menu. And another health benefit is that Google put the Health Connect app inside the system settings within the privacy section. It's even on my Pixel devices running Android 13 since it's a mainline module. If you don't know what Health Connect is, it basically syncs your health stats and data between multiple apps. So for example, you can allow Fitbit to send data over to Google Fit and vice versa if you wish, or a plethora of other health apps on the Play Store. It's just the middleman. Within the battery usage, it finally displays the screen time front and center to find it easier before you needed to look within the system usage section, which was such a pain. And there's also a new drop down menu to make switching between the two sections easier. The battery saver has some of its toggles like extreme battery saver and adaptive battery shown on the main page instead of needing to open them in another one. A great move, because I totally forgot that native Android had an extreme battery saver mode. Plus, when scheduling Battery Saver, the threshold has been raised to 20% instead of just 10. And you can now disable reminders that appear when the battery is low. Overall, some pretty good edits within the system settings. Going over some minor changes, the overall design with Material U hasn't been touched yet, but there is a new color choice within the Styles and Wallpaper section that lets you have a black and white theme. I kinda dig it. If you share your phone with multiple people for work, you most likely use the guest mode, which will be given a huge new feature. You'll be able to grant secondary users admin privileges that let them do extra perks, like managing other users, modifying system settings, and even factory resetting the device. So be careful who you allow admin status to. And for bigger devices like foldables or tablets, Android 14 has also brought about some great improvements. For one, the taskbar filled with some of your favorite apps now gets minimized whenever you open an app. And to bring it back, you can hop into the Recents page or slightly swipe up and hold. It gives you more screen real estate when you're within an app. Plus the taskbar background is now rounded and doesn't reach the edges like before, which I think looks a lot more cleaner. There will also be better support for keyboards, which is perfect if you're trying to turn your Android tablet into a mini computer. Android 14 lets you customize the touchpad if your keyboard comes with one. You'll be able to toggle new gestures, change the pointer speed, and a lot more. Plus, you'll be able to modify certain keys to do different actions. Just a much better experience all around for physical typers. There are also some drastic changes done under the hood. The first one is that Android 14 will only support apps that are 64-bit. So any apps or games that still are 32-bit will not work on Android 14. Again, getting rid of older apps that haven't been updated in years. Android 14 will also enforce a new video codec called AB1. It's a lot more efficient than other video systems and will save much more bandwidth without losing any video quality. YouTube for one already uses AB1 to make certain resolutions more efficient. So it's definitely a path in the right direction. There are a ton more under the hood changes, but most of them are for developers like new APIs and features that squash bugs. Pretty boring stuff. But if you want to know what they are, I'll leave some links to a couple of Twitter threads made by Android expert Michal Rahman where he goes over all of them. With that said, there are also many exciting new features that are not live yet, but we could see them in future Android 14 releases. They've been discovered within Android 14's code thanks to some developers and Android experts. I'll be sure to source the individuals in the lower left corner of this video. But just to be clear, these aren't a guarantee because Google could just end up tossing all these out in the final update. Now the first is that there could be a new Pixel exclusive feature called Emoji Lab that will allow you to create wallpapers with various emojis. 
It will be accessible through the wallpaper app and within it, you can choose up to 14 emojis to use in the background. Then you can customize the size, patterns, and colors. Pretty neat. Something more exciting is that Google might include a new menu within the settings that makes it easier to track all the apps installed by your device manufacturer or carrier. So basically all the bloatware on your phone and next to each app will be an easy uninstall button. Very exciting because no one likes blowware. And along with removing apps, you may be able to duplicate them since Google is reportedly working on a cloning feature called cloned apps. Way easier than needing to make a work profile. Plus it comes in handy for duplicating social media apps like Snapchat or WhatsApp, which don't allow you to sign into multiple accounts simultaneously. The only unfortunate thing is that you won't be able to clone every app since Google will enable the manufacturers to be able to block certain apps from being duplicated. And so far, Google is also blocking most of its own apps as well. Now, remember how Android 13 released a bilingual feature that lets you change the language on a per app basis? Well, Android 14 could expand this even further by allowing apps to know about your preferred number system, calendar system, temperature units, and even the first day of the week, its original preference. Android 14 may also do some crazy things with your SIM cards, like you can easily convert your physical SIM to an eSIM. That way you save yourself an annoying phone call with your carrier. And another sweet feature is that if you use dual SIM cards, then Android 14 will automatically switch to the SIM card that has better availability for phone calls and the internet. So no longer will you need to jump into the settings and jump through various hoops just to switch to the SIM card with the better network. There are also some features that iOS has that could also arrive to Android 14. The first is an iOS feature called Continuity Camera. It allows Mac users to use their iPhones as a webcam without doing any fiddly setup. It's super seamless. Of course, Androids can also do this by downloading an extra app, but the idea is to have this webcam feature work natively. And Android 14 could soon offer a native support for using your phone as a webcam, not just on Mac too, but also on PCs and Chromebooks. Take that, Apple. Another awesome feature that Apple already has is satellite connectivity for the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro and Pro Max. Users can send emergency text messages via satellite whenever they're in a remote area. They call it emergency SOS. And now there are rumors that Android could also use low earth orbit satellites to expand coverage to remote areas. Hiroshi, the SVP for Android, even tweeted that they're designing for satellites with the help of their partner, which is T-Mobile. And just last year, T-Mobile joined forces with SpaceX to go above and beyond. If this is true, we're literally living in the future. Lastly, we all know that the share menu is one of the last few items in Android that is just complete crap. I mean, it's inconsistent with almost every app and each OEM has its own version that they created. Luckily, this could soon change since the share menu will have a mainline module to update it through Google Play services, meaning that Google can revise it much more rapidly and efficiently. Before, they could only update it whenever they released a huge OS update, so the process was much slower, but not anymore. So keep an eye on that share sheet in the future. These are all the major changes found within Android 14 thus far, and as promised, I'll show you how to update it to Android 14. It's really simple. First off, Android currently only works on specific Google Pixel devices, so if you don't see your phone on the screen, then you can't get Android 14 just yet. The second thing you should know is that this process will wipe everything, so make sure you back up everything to the cloud with the Google One app. Now that you've done that, you're ready to go. So first, hop into the system settings and enable the developer options. If you don't know how to do that, the directions are on the screen. Then within the developer options, you need to enable USB debugging. From there, connect your phone to your computer and go to flash.android.com, select allow ADB access and click add new device. You should see a dialog pop up with your phone name. Select it and hit connect. A dialog will then pop up on your phone requesting USB debugging, so allow it. And then on the website, you should see the latest Android 14 build. And finally, I click on install build and follow the on-screen instructions. Then after a few reboots and reconnections, you should land on Android 14. Sweet. By the way, if you'd like to revert back to Android 13, you can do the same process. Just select the Android 13 build this time. Anyways, if you'd like a complete recap of Android 13, click this video right here and I'll meet you over there. 
Also, I'll make sure to include some Google Pixel devices that can obtain Android 14 within YouTube's product tag feature in the lower left corner of this video, sponsored by YouTube themselves. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!